So I'm going to be straight up with you. What you're looking at is my favorite loudspeaker for under a thousand dollars a pair. And this is a statement that I don't make lightly because there's a lot of great competition in this price range from companies like BMW, Kef, Elac, Klipsch, Dolly, Ascend Acoustics, you get the idea. But these speakers to me, they're so special. I mean, this is what I do Zero Fidelity for, is to discover hidden gems that offer wonderful all-around performance at a price that just about anyone can afford. So you know what? Let's roll the intro and talk about them. So here it is, the Triangle Berea BR03 Bookshelf Loudspeaker. So you know what guys, I'm gonna start off this video with my sharpest criticism of the product, which is its name. I'm not sure what it is about Triangle, but they always seem to come up with these long names for each and every one of their products. So what I'm gonna to do to keep my sanity is I'm gonna to refer to this speaker as the Bro 3 from now on. Sorry Triangle, but you kind of brought this on yourself. So what's up with the new Borea series? Well, it's designed to serve as the latest entry into the Triangle lineup, and it's designed to deliver good all around performance at a price that a lot of people can afford. Forward. Speaking of price, earlier when I mentioned that this is my favorite speaker under $1,000, I mean well under $1,000. These speakers retail for only $550 a pair. And what do you get for that money? Well, what you're going to get is a large two-way front-ported bookshelf loudspeaker. Up top, we're going to have a one-inch soft dome tweeter, and most of you are going to pick up on these unique pillars on the bottom and on the top of the tweeter. And this isn't designed to eliminate resonances like a lot of phase plugs. Instead, this is to help disperse sound out into the room. Beneath that, we are going to have a six-inch cellulose membrane paper woofer or in other words, an untreated paper woofer cone. This is designed to be low mass to where it doesn't take a lot of power in order to safely fuel these loudspeakers. Beneath that, we are gonna have two front ports, and now let's take a look at the back. Now, some of you may notice this beautiful walnut wrap. I believe it's a wrap. If it's a veneer, I'll let you know in the comment section below, but it looks great in person. And now on the back, you're gonna notice a set of typical five-way binding posts. So that's gonna be it for our Bro 3s. Now, let's talk about how they sound. All right, so now we've arrived to my favorite part of the review, which is all about performance. And when it comes to the Bro 3s, there's gonna be a lot of ground to cover, so I'm gonna dive straight on in. So getting right to it, the reason why I like these speakers so much is due to their all around performance. It's like Triangle looked at all the things that audiophiles are looking for in a good listening experience and then sprinkled those virtues into one affordable bookshelf solution, meaning that we have a product that's easy to drive, easy to work with, it sounds good at low volumes as well as high volumes, it's dynamic, it has great imaging, it sounds good with real world music on real world gear, but it's just refined and resolute enough to reward you when you connect it to higher end gear and you listen to excellent quality recordings. Overall, you're gonna get good sense of scale, you're gonna get good tone, and you're just gonna get this excellent all-around performance from a product that doesn't cost a whole lot of money, making it really easy for someone like me to recommend to other individuals, because it's not gonna have any of these same quirks that most affordable products have. And that leads me to the individual elements of the presentation, starting with the character. So this speaker is not gonna be a ruler flat monitor-like experience. Instead, this is a product that has a very distinct color to its sound. So when you kick back and you listen to them, you're gonna notice a few things, starting with how it projects sound out into the room. So it is gonna be slightly on the forward side of neutral, but not due to the reason that you may think. Usually it's due to treble being boosted, but in this case, the treble is actually really smooth. Instead, it's all about the energy within the mid range, because when you sit back and you listen to these speakers, you're gonna notice that it projects sound slightly in front of where the speakers will physically be located in your room. Overall though, you're gonna get a top end that's smooth, mid-range that's gonna be forward just a little bit with energy and life to the sound, and then you're gonna have bass that's strong and warm. And that leads me to the individual elements, starting with the treble. So the treble, in my opinion, is gonna be the best all-around top end that I've heard from a speaker under $1,000 because it is so finely balanced. It's smooth, it's airy, 
it's articulate, yet you can listen to just about anything through this speaker. And unless the recording is just absolutely trash, you're gonna be in for a good time. Yet, it's just refined enough to where when you do listen to an excellent quality recording, you'll be able to reap the rewards of that excellent recording. I mean, no, it's not gonna be as refined and as articulate as a speaker that costs a lot more money, but it's gonna be very good for something at this price. Unless you like a distinctly forward sharp sound, I don't see too many people not enjoying the top end of this speaker. Now let's talk about the mid-range. So the mid-range is going to be the opposite of most monitors. Most monitors have a dip and a crossover point between the tweeter and the woofer. This goes in the complete opposite direction of that. Instead, it's going to be boosted up a little bit. The mid-range is going to be forward in nature. And this is going to create a sense of presence to the sound that's actually pretty unusual for a budget product. So it's going to have this sense of fullness. When you listen to something that has more of a dynamic impact, like say rock and roll, I mean, it's really going to have a borderline visceral feel to the sound. So it's gonna be very easy to hear all the detail within the mid-range, especially for something at this price point. And it's just, it's flat out fun to listen to. Again, this isn't some wussy sounding little hi-fi speaker. It's gonna be very engaging due to how that mid-range projects sound into the room. And then there's gonna be the bass, which is strong. I mean, this is a speaker that even though it's still fairly large for what it is, it's gonna deliver more bass than what you're probably expecting. And it's gonna be very strong. It's not going to be the tightest bass in the world, but it's nonetheless going to have a good tone to it. It's going to be fun and enjoyable. The only thing that you need to be wary of is if you put it directly against the wall, you may get too much of a good thing because the bass is going to be just a little bit thick, a little bit extra, but I'm the kind of person that I would rather have a little bit more than what I need versus less. So overall, you're just going to get this fun sound. Now let's talk about imaging. The imaging of this speaker is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's going to cast a wide sound stage, but there's still going to be good focus in between the speakers. Now, it's not going to be the best focus that I've ever heard between a set of speakers at this price point, but I think it's going to be good enough for most people. Also, the off-axis imaging is going to be fantastic. In fact, one of my tests for a speaker, especially when it comes to tone, is how it sounds when I'm not in the room. And these speakers have a very realistic sense of tone to it when I'm walking around in different parts of the house. In fact, it sometimes will make me stop and go, wow, that sounds really, really good. And that's really uncommon for something at this price. Next, let's talk about dynamic range. So dynamics is going to be surprisingly good for something at this price. I mean, no, it's not going to start and stop on a dime like some other products, like say the Yamas that I reviewed earlier, but it's nonetheless going to have some weight and heft to the sound. It's not quite visceral, but it's close. It's really, really close. And now let's talk about what it's like to work with in terms of component matching. So I come to find that, or come to find that this is a very easy speaker to work with. I mean, when I tried it on my IOTA VX SA3, I thought it was going to be an okay match, but it ended up being a sublime affordable match. So that's definitely a combination that I could recommend to most people who are looking for a slim, excellent sounding solution. Obviously, as you move up the ladder, you get better sound, but I don't think it's it's necessary to buy a thousand dollar integrated to pair up to these speakers. I mean, anything that's decent between 300 bucks and 500 bucks should be a good match. And when it comes to positioning, you do want to give it just a little bit of space away from a wall boundary. I would say maybe a couple feet in order to get the best, most balanced sound. Um, but otherwise, these speakers are very unfussy with positioning. Now, if you put the magnetic grills on, you're going to notice that the sound will smoothen out just a little bit, so it's something worth experimenting with. Uh, otherwise, though, it's very easy to work with. I tend to prefer the presentation with the speakers pointed directly out into the room. I feel like this results in the most natural voicing, but this is something you can experiment with. If you want more of that forward in your face sound, just point the speakers towards you, and then that's exactly what you're going to get. And finally, I would say that these speakers are going to be good for a wide variety variety of rooms. Small to medium sized rooms are going to be ideal, but they can fill a big space with sound, but you're going to be limited in volume out, uh, excuse me, output capacity as you would with any small speaker. And that leads me to some of the caveats. So when it comes to caveats, there are only two things that I can really come up with here. Number one, these speakers aren't going to be the most ideal solution for desktop use. So if you're looking for that kind of a solution, I would encourage you to check out the smaller speakers within the line to see if that's going to be a better match for you. And then number two, the bass is strong. Now, on one hand, I think that's really cool. But on the other hand, it's going to be too much for some people, especially if you have to place the speaker directly against the wall. It's just something that you need to be aware of. Otherwise, 
it's the same business as usual. There's no one product that's gonna appeal to everyone. Some people are gonna listen to this and they're gonna prefer the sharper sound of a BMW speaker or the harder sounding mid-range of a Kef or an Eliac Unify or the unique presentation of a horn speaker like the Klipsch. As usual, this is something that you need to try out for yourself to see if it's a good fit for you, but I can't imagine too many people not liking this speaker provided that they know what they're getting into first. And that leads me to my final thoughts. So normally I end my reviews by giving you guys two different conclusions. The first is usually objective and the second is more subjective in nature. But this time around, I'm gonna focus entirely on the subjective because I have a lot of thoughts that I wanna share with you guys about these speakers. So let's start off by acknowledging how great it is to have so many excellent options in the market in the affordable price range. I mean, we're getting performance nowadays that I couldn't have even dreamed about 15 or so years ago when I got into the hobby. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a bummer that most of us can't audition this stuff, before we buy it, but at least we have access to it. Now, when it comes to the Bro 3s, I don't mind saying that this is gonna become my go-to reference for anybody who has a budget of $1,000 or less. I mean, unless you're looking for a particular sound, you're looking for something that has sharp treble or the tightest bass possible, I feel like this speaker is gonna cover enough basses to make most people very, very happy. Whether you're a seasoned audiophile and you're looking for a solution for a secondary rig, or you're just getting into this and you just want really good all-around performance because you wanna sit back and enjoy your music, yet still get a taste of what the whole audiophile thing is all about. And if anything, I think what's so impressive is the fact that Triangle, this small company has released a product that looks better than just about anything on the market that also offers better all around performance than most of these big companies that have a lot more buying power that are a lot more established. I mean, that is a wonderful accomplishment by Triangle. And if anything, to be entirely honest with you, I think that this series is more charming and more easy to recommend than their higher end Esprit series. In fact, I would actually take these speakers over to previous Triangle products that I've already reviewed. Even though those other products are objectively better, they have more insight, they're more detailed, they're more buttoned up, this speaker is more fun. And that leads me to something that's very important. Throughout the reviewing process, whenever I would sit down and listen to music through these speakers, it's one of the few products that's caused me to lose sleep. As in, I didn't get any sleep that evening or morning because I couldn't stop listening to music. Not many products out there can do that. And the fact that these products were able to do that to these affordable, or affordable, spoiled ears, that's really special to me. And it's why I'm just so hyped up on these speakers. Now clearly, they're not gonna be for everybody, right? I mean, there's gonna be some of you out there that are gonna prefer a sound that's gonna be cleaner or sharper. Some of you are gonna prefer more the horn presentation or mid-range that's gonna be warmer sounding. I mean, there's gonna be a wide variety of taste out there. I can't promise that they're gonna be for everyone. In fact, I need to make it clear that this still has a budget sound. You're still gonna hear the influence of the cabinet because it's not gonna be made of the most rigid materials. It's not gonna be the most button up presentation, but you know what? I have a funny feeling that this is gonna be a tweaker's dream because with just a few changes, with just a few upgrades within the crossover, maybe some additional bracing, I have a funny feeling you can eke out a lot more performance out of this speaker for not a lot of money down. So anyways, just a thought worth sharing. And that should pretty much wrap up my thoughts on this speaker. So the Borea BR03 or Bro 3s. Guys, from now on, these are bros, right? I mean, we have that understanding, these are bros. So the Bro 3s, really exceptional speakers for the money. I'm so glad that I had an opportunity to cross paths with them. That way, I could tell you all about them right now. So anyways, as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace. Whew, what a rave review. All right, so this comparison is gonna be a lot of fun because what I have are two exceptional performing speakers for the money. We have our Klipsch RP600Ms, which have become the sweethearts of the affordable world for 2019, but next to them is gonna be the newcomer, the Triangle Bro 3. So the big question is, how do they compare to one another? And I think the best place to begin is to start off by noting their similarities. So number one, they're both roughly the same size. Obviously they have a different aesthetic, but they take up around the same space. Now when you sit down and you listen to them, there are gonna 
gonna be a lot of similarities between these speakers. I mean, both are very easy to drive, both are very easy to work with. It doesn't take a lot of effort to get good sound out of them in a regular listening space. They both tend to sound the best when you point them directly out into your room. They're very versatile in terms of the kind of music that they sound good with. They're just resolute enough to reward you with good recordings or excellent components. They're both very similar. I mean, even when you sit down and you listen, you're gonna notice, for example, the top end on both speakers is gonna be very smooth. It has really good mid-range, good bass, but there's still gonna be some key differences between them. So first, let's talk about how they project sound into the room. So the clutch is gonna be slightly more forward in the treble, whereas the triangles are gonna be more forward in the mid-range. The triangles are gonna have a lot more bass to the sound to the point where some people may not even feel like they need a subwoofer. Whereas the clutch, they're not gonna have as much bass, but the bass they do have is gonna be just a little bit quicker and a little bit more articulate than the triangles. Now, even though the clips are rear ported and the triangles are front ported, that doesn't really have a bearing as to how they play next to a wall boundary. Both of them like to be out at least a couple feet from a wall in order to sound their best. Now, let's talk about the treble for a second. Both speakers are exceptionally smooth at low volumes, but once you begin to crank the volume, that's when the differences become more apparent. The horn and the clips becomes a lot more obvious as you crank the volume, it becomes just a little bit more shouty, and you start to notice the top end a bit more. Whereas with the triangles, it's a soft dome tweeter, so it sounds very consistent regardless of the volume until, of course, you start to take things too far. I would say that the clips can go just a little bit louder than the triangles, although not by much. Moving on to the mid-range, the mid-range is gonna be different on both of these speakers. The mid-range on the triangle is gonna be a little bit more forward, a little bit more energetic, whereas the mid-range on the clips is gonna be just a little bit more laid back and warm sounding by comparison. Then we have the bass. As I mentioned before, the bass is gonna be a little cleaner, although not as prominent on the clips, whereas on the triangles, you're gonna get that fuller range sound. In terms of dynamics, both speakers are actually pretty dynamic, but I'm gonna give the slight, and I do mean slight edge, to clips in this regard. When it comes to imaging, the triangles are gonna lay down a wider sound stage, whereas the clips are gonna offer better focus in between the speakers. And I think that's about it. I mean, both speakers compare very well to one another. I mean, look, even though I just released this super rave review of the Bro 3s, it doesn't take away from the fact that the Klipsch are still exceptional speakers. I think the reason why I do prefer the Bro 3s is because they're just easier to recommend due to the lack of that horn coloration that you can experience depending on setup and the volumes that you listen at. But I will say this, if you already own and if you're happy with the Klipsch, keep them. You don't need to trade them out for something like this because it would be more of a lateral move than anything else. Unless you're just not satisfied, in which case, yeah, try out the Bro 3s. Now, if you're new to this and you haven't made a decision yet, I do think that the Bro 3s are going to be the safer bet for most people, but that's just going to be my take on it. Speaking of which, it's time for me to finally wrap up this video, so hopefully you got something from this. As always, guys, I appreciate you tuning in, and until next time, peace.